the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. In various parts of the Church, abuses have occurred, leading to confusion with regard to sound faith and Catholic doctrine concerning this wonderful sacrament. At times one encounters an extremely reductive understanding of the Eucharistic mystery. Stripped of its sacrificial meaning, it is celebrated as if it were simply a fraternal banquet. St. Pope John Paul II, A.D. 2003, Ecclesia de Eucharistia No. 10. What does it mean to offer sacrifice? The word sacrifice comes from two Latin words, sacrum and facere. Sacrum means sacred or holy. The word holy in Latin, Hebrew, and Greek is derived from the idea of being totally set apart, totally other. To say that God is the holiest, we proclaim that God is holy, holy, holy. Facere means to make or to do. When we offer sacrifice, sacrum facere, we make holy whatever we offer. We set it apart totally for the Lord. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, On the tenth day of this month, let every man by their families and houses take a lamb. And it shall be a lamb without blemish, a male of one year. And the whole multitude of the children of Israel shall sacrifice it in the evening. And they shall take its blood and put it upon both the side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses where they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh that night roasted at the fire with unleavened bread and wild lettuce. And this day shall be for you a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord in your generations with an everlasting observance. Exodus 12 And the Passover sacrifice continued, first in the meeting tent, then the Temple of Solomon, and even after the return from exile until the destruction of the second temple in A.D. 70. This is what you shall sacrifice upon the altar, two lambs of a year old every day continually, one lamb in the morning and another in the evening, with one lamb a tenth part of flour tempered with beaten oil, and the fourth part of a hin of wine for libation of the same measure. Exodus 29, 38-40 Flour mixed with oil makes bread which is offered every day with wine and the Lamb of God. The Lord said that this offering of bread and wine would take place for everlasting generations. Daily offering of bread and wine and the Lamb of God now takes place every day at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. St. John chapter 1 verse 29 And the day of the unleavened bread came, on which it was necessary that the Passover lamb should be killed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare for us the Passover, that we may eat. Luke 22, 7-8 St. Paul clearly understood that Jesus was the new Passover lamb. Purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new batch of dough, as you are unleavened. For Christ our Paschal lamb is sacrificed. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. When the Church celebrates the Eucharist, the memorial of her Lord's death and resurrection, the central event of salvation becomes really present, and the work of our redemption is carried out. The sacrifice is so decisive for the salvation of the human race that Jesus Christ offered it and returned to the Father only after he had left us a means of sharing in it, as if we had been present there. Each member of the faithful can thus take part in it and inexhaustibly gain its fruits. 
St. Pope John Paul II, A.D. 2003, Ecclesia de Eucharistia, number 11. Since the time of St. Paul, the Catholic Church has always believed that the Mass, the celebration of the Lord's Supper, is the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus upon Calvary. In some mystical and eternal way, God, who is outside time, stepped into time to accomplish our salvation by means of the sacrifice of Christ upon the cross. And again, in some mystical and eternal way, the Lord provided a way for those who followed after him to be present at his one saving act. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. St. Paul, A.D. 60, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 27. Not by the blood of goats or of calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the Holy of Holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and oxen and the sprinkling of the heifer's ashes can sanctify such as are defiled for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Spirit offered himself unspotted unto God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Hebrews 9, 12, 14, circa A.D. 70. On every Lord's Day, his special day, come together and break bread and give thanks, first confessing your sins so that your sacrifice may be pure. Anyone at variance with his neighbor must not join you until they are reconciled, lest your sacrifice be defiled. For it was of this sacrifice that the Lord said, Always and everywhere offer me a pure sacrifice, for I am a great king, says the Lord, and my name is marveled at by the nations. Didache, circa 100 A.D. God speaks through the mouth of Malachi, who was one of the twelve prophets, and who said the following concerning the sacrifices you offered at that time. I will not accept sacrifices from your hands, for from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is glorified among the Gentiles, but you profane it. He goes on to speak about us, the Gentiles, who in every place offer him sacrifices, namely the Eucharistic bread and the Eucharistic cup, saying that, we glorify his name, but you profane it. St. Justin Martyr died A.D. 165. Dialogue with Trifo. Many people think that they ought not take part in the prayers of sacrifice, Eucharist, on station days, fast days, on the grounds that the fast must not be broken by reception of the Lord's body. Always suppose that the Eucharist cancels the devotion vowed to God? Does it not rather bind it to God? Will not your fast be more solemn if you have stood at the God's altar? When the Lord's body has been received and reserved, both points are secured. Participation in the sacrifice and performance of the duty. Tertullian died A.D. 240. For if Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, is himself the chief priest of God the Father, and has first offered himself a sacrifice to the Father, and has commanded this to be done in commemoration of himself, certainly that priest truly discharges the office of Christ, who imitates that which Christ did. 
and he then offers a true and full sacrifice in the church to God the Father, when he proceeds to offer it according to what he sees Christ himself to have offered. St. Cyprian, circa A.D. 258, letter 63-14. When thirty days have passed after my death, offer the holy sacrifice for me, for the deceased prophet from the sacrifices offered by the living. St. Ephraim the Syrian died A.D. 373, last will and testament. And the priest says, Therefore we call to mind his most glorious passion, his resurrection from hell, and his ascension into heaven. We offer you this spotless sacrifice, this spiritual sacrifice, this unbloody sacrifice, this holy bread and the cup of eternal life. We beseech and pray that you accept this offering upon your altar on high through the hands of your angels, just as you deign to accept the gift of your just son Abel and the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, and what the high priest Melchizedek offered to you. St. Ambrose died A.D. 387 on the sacraments, Catechesis 4. But cease not both to pray and to plead for me when you draw down the word by your word, when with a bloodless cutting you sever the body and blood of the Lord, using your voice for the sword. St. Gregory Nazianzen died 389 A.D. Letters number 171. He that offers the sacrifice of praise glorifies me, and in this way will I show him my salvation. From Psalm 49, verse 23. Before the coming of Christ, the flesh and blood of this sacrifice were foreshadowed in the animals slain. In the Passion of Christ, the types were fulfilled by the true sacrifice. After the ascension of Christ, this sacrifice is commemorated in the sacrament. St. Augustine, circa 400 A.D., it's a reply to Faustus the Manichaean, chapter 21, verse 20. For when you see the Lord sacrificed and laid upon the altar, and the priest standing and praying over the victim, and all the worshippers empurpled with that precious blood, can you still think that you are still among men and standing upon earth? St. John Chrysostom died A.D. 407 on the Priesthood, Book 3, Chapter 4. What then do we not offer every day? Certainly we offer we make remembrance of his death, and this remembrance is one, not many. How is it one and not many? Because the sacrifice was offered once, as was true in the Holy of Holies. This sacrifice is a figure of the former, and this is a remembrance of that. For we always offer the same, not one today, another tomorrow, but always the same, wherefore the sacrifice is one. St. John Chrysostom died A.D. 407, homily 17. Since Christ our Lord offered himself for us as a sacrifice, and thus became in reality our high priest, we must view the bishop who approaches the altar as representing his image, not as offering his own sacrifice. He does not offer his own sacrifice since he is not in truth the high priest. Theodore of Mopsuestia, circa A.D. 444, homily 15 on the Eucharist. The sacrifice is offered so that the death of the Lord, who died for us, may be proclaimed and commemorated. He said, No one has more love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. So it was out of love that Christ died for us. 
When we commemorate his death during the sacrifice, we ask that love be granted us through the coming of the Holy Spirit. St. Fulgentius of Rusby, circa A.D. 523, against Fabian, 2817. Canon 32. No member of the laity is to leave Mass before the Lord's Prayer has been said. If a bishop is present, his blessing is to be awaited. No one bearing weapons for war is to attend the morning or evening sacrifice of the Mass. Synod of Orléans 3, A.D. 538. This sacrifice alone has the power of saving the soul from eternal death, for it presents to us mystically the death of the only begotten Son. Though he is now risen from the dead and dies no more, and death has no more power over him, Romans 6, 9, yet living in himself immortal and incorruptible, he is again immolated for us in the mystery of the Holy Sacrifice. See then how august the sacrifice that is offered for us, ever reproducing in itself the passion of the only begotten Son for the remission of sins. Saint Pope Gregory the Great died A.D. 604, Dialogues, Book 4, 58. Since we understand that in several churches grapes are brought to the altar according to a custom which has long prevailed, and the ministers join this with the unbloody sacrifice of oblation, and distributed both to the people at the same time, we decree that no priest shall do this for the future, but shall administer the oblation alone to the people for the quickening of their souls and for the remission of their sins. Local Council of Trullo, Canon 28, A.D. 692. The priest, Ipa, then called the brethren, ordered dinner to be provided, masses to be said, and all of them to communicate as usual causing also a part of the same sacrifice of the Lord's oblation to be carried to the sick boy. Saint Bede the Venerable died A.D. 735, Ecclesiastical History of England. As to their dwellings, some monks build their homes at a distance one from another, but meet on the Lord's Day at one church and communicate of the holy mysteries, I mean the unbloody sacrifice of the undefiled body and precious blood of Christ, which the Lord gave to the faithful for the remission of sins, for the enlightenment and sanctification of soul and body. St. John of Damascus died A.D. 749, Balaam and Yosef. This oblation is repeated every day, even though Christ suffered only once in the flesh, and by one and the same deadly suffering, saved the world, and after rising from death to life, was no longer subject to death. Therefore, because we fall every day, every day Christ is mystically immolated for us, and the passion of Christ is handed on in mystery. St. Pascasius Robertus De corpore et sanguine domine, A.D. 833. In the course of a 10th century biography of St. Ulrich, 893-973, the German Bishop of Augsburg, we are told for the first time of a ceremony that reenacted the burial of Christ by symbolically burying the reserved Eucharist on Good Friday in a location that, like the Holy Sepulchre itself, was closed with a stone until Easter Sunday. In the Presence of Our Lord, The History, Theology, and Psychology of Eucharistic Devotion by Father Benedict Groeschel and James Monty, page 198. The reason why the priest utters a greeting in church is this, that he may show that he is at peace with the whole assembly of the faithful. 
And so the priest, before he offers sacrifice and prayers to God, shows by this mutual greeting that he is bound to die, faithful by the bond of brotherly love. St. Peter Damien died A.D. 1072. The Book of The Lord Be With You. And that he might in this mystery show how much he loved us, he gave us that very flesh which he had assumed for us, that we might eat it, and onwards to this day fails not to administer it to us in the sacrifice of his altar. St. Anselm, died A.D. 1109, Fourth Meditation, number 21. And since the Son offered himself as a sacrifice to the Father, and accordingly in the ceremonies of the Mass the prayers are offered particularly to the Father, and the immolation of the host is made to him, why should the altar not be held to be chiefly his, to whom above all the supplication and sacrifice are made? Is it not called more rightly the altar of him who receives than of him who makes then sacrifice? Peter Abelard died A.D. 1142. The story of my misfortunes. I also beseech in the Lord all my brothers who are and shall be and desire to be priests of the Most High that when they wish to celebrate Mass, being pure, they offer the true sacrifice of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ purely, with reverence, with a holy and clean intention, not for any earthly thing or fear or for the love of any man, as it were pleasing men. St. Francis of Assisi died A.D. 1226. Letter to all friars. I answer that as stated, this sacrament is not only a sacrament, but also a sacrifice. For it has the nature of a sacrifice inasmuch as in this sacrament Christ's passion is represented, whereby Christ offered himself a victim to God. Ephesians 5.2 And it has the nature of a sacrament inasmuch as invisible grace is bestowed in this sacrament under visible species. So then, this sacrament benefits recipients by way both of sacrament and of sacrifice because it is offered for all who partake of it. For it is said in the canon of the Mass, May as many of us as by participation at this altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, be filled with all heavenly benediction and grace. St. Thomas Aquinas died A.D. 1264, Summa Theologica 3, Question 79, Article 7. Brother John of Alvernia approached the altar and began the sacrifice. As he proceeded, his heart so overflowed with love to Christ, and the sensation he experienced was so ineffable, that he could not express it in words, and he was in doubt whether he ought to leave off the celebration of Mass or to go on. Brother Ugolino died A.D. 1342. Little Flowers of St. Francis of Assisi But far more do I demand purity in my ministers, and love towards me, and towards their fellow creatures, administering to them the body and blood of my only begotten Son, with the fire of charity, and a hunger for the salvation of souls, for the glory and honor of my name even as these ministers require cleanness in the chalice in which this sacrifice is made, even so do I require the purity and cleanness of their heart and soul and mind. St. Catherine of Siena, A.D. 1370, A Treatise on Prayer Fifthly, a short scheme of the seven sacraments of the Church, namely, Baptism, Confirmation, Eucharist, Penance, Extreme Unction, Orders, and Matrimony, indicating the matter, the form, and the minister of each, 
and that while the chalice is being offered in the sacrifice of the altar, a little water should be mixed with the wine. Council of Florence, A.D. 1439, Session 8. For as much as in this divine sacrifice which is celebrated in the Mass, the same Christ is contained and immolated in an unbloody manner, who once offered himself in a bloody manner on the altar of the cross. The Holy Synod teaches that this sacrifice is truly propitiatory. Council of Trent, Chapter 22, Session 2, A.D. 1562. In closing, another office of clerics is to assist with devotion, reverence, and attention at the divine sacrifice, in which the Lamb of God is daily sacrificed. I know that there are many pious clerics to be found in the church, but I not only know, but I have often seen many assisting at the altar of the Lord with roving eyes and improper demeanor, as if the service were a mean and common thing and not most sacred and terrible. And perhaps the cleric is not so much to blame as the priest himself, who sometimes says Mass in such a hurried manner and with so little devotion as to seem not to be aware of what he is doing. St. Robert Bellarmine, died A.D. 1621, The Art of Dying Well. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass gives infinite honor to the Most Blessed Trinity because it represents the Passion of Jesus Christ and because through the Mass we offer to God the merits of our Lord's obedience, of His sufferings, and of His precious blood. St. Louis Marie de Montfort died A.D. 1716, the admirable secret of the Rosary. The principal excellence of the Most Holy Sacrifice of the Mass consists in being essentially and in the very highest degree identical with that which was offered on the cross of Calvary with this sole difference that the sacrifice on the cross was bloody and made once for all and did on that one occasion satisfy fully for all the sins of the world while the sacrifice of the altar is an unbloody sacrifice which can be repeated an infinite number of times and was instituted in order to apply in detail that universal ransom which Jesus paid for us on Calvary. St. Leonard of Port Maurice died A.D. 1751. Just as the sacrifice on Calvary was accomplished by the cruelty of ungodly priests and by the bloodthirsty hands of brutal executioners, so is the sacrifice of the Mass, even when unworthily celebrated, a true sacrifice. But the guilty and unworthy priest who celebrates it plays the part not only of the Jewish priests who condemned our Lord, but also of the soldiers who crucified Him. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, died A.D. 1824, the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When people wish to destroy religion, they begin by attacking the priest, because where there is no longer any priest, there is no sacrifice, and where there is no longer any sacrifice, there is no religion. St. John Vianney died A.D. 1859, Catechism on the Priesthood. Therefore, since it is certain by the doctrine of the Catholic Church that the souls detained in purgatory are benefited by the prayers of the faithful, and especially by the august sacrifice of the altar, we think we can give them no more useful and desirable pledge of our love than by everywhere increasing the offering of the pure oblation of the most holy sacrifice of our divine mediator for the extension of their pain. Pope Leo XIII, 1888, on the Sacerdotal Jubilee. In virtue of the sacred power with which he is endowed, the ministerial priest instructs and rules the priestly people, performs in the person of Christ the Eucharistic sacrifice, and offers it to God in the name of all the faithful. Vatican II, Lumen Gentium, number 10, A.D. 1964.
The unity of the Lord's Supper, of the sacrifice on the cross, of the representation, and the renewal of both in the Mass is inviolably affirmed and celebrated in the new rite, just as they were in the old. The Mass is and remains the memorial of Christ's Last Supper. At that supper, the Lord changed the bread and wine into His body and His blood, and instituted the sacrifice of the New Testament. He willed that the sacrifice should be identically renewed by the power of His priesthood, conferred on the apostles. Only the manner of offering is different, namely, an unbloody and sacramental manner, and it is offered in perennial memory of Himself until His final return. Pope Paul VI A.D. 1969, General Audience, the Mass is the same. The Mass makes present the sacrifice of the cross. It does not add to that sacrifice, nor does it multiply it. What is repeated is its memorial celebration, its memorialis demonstratio, which makes Christ one definitive redemptive sacrifice always present in time. The sacrificial nature of a Eucharistic mystery cannot be, therefore, understood as something separate, independent of the cross, or only indirectly referring to the sacrifice of the cross. St. Pope John Paul II, A.D. 2003, Ecclesia de Eucharistia, number 12. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Eucharistic Prayer number 3, Roman Missal, 3rd edition, 2011.